before I start. Really enjoy the film, by the way. You know what? My only regard, I, as much as I love Chantilly Bridge, I was actually for the next 20 minutes trying to find Chantilly Lace for to rent or to purchase. So putting you on the spot, Linda, where can I find it? Can I find it? What's going on? And I apologize because you've been answering this question all day. So Thank you. So no, well, you're just starting out, but I do get asked a lot. I'm so grateful for it. We are, we have a, a number of offers to release uh, Chantilly Lace, and we're thrilled about that. Um, uh, we think the film stands alone, Chantilly Bridge, um, and uh, we think Chantilly Lace is fabulous with it. We all just got to see Chantilly Lace at a screening. We had a big screening, you know, a retrospective of my work, and this is actually the fifth of this kind of movie. So when we uh, bring Chantilly Lace out, we'll also bring out um, uh, Parallel Lives, which we did the year after Chantilly Lace, which features the same wonderful cast. So... <laughs> yeah, not even because she's the newcomer. She's the newbie. She's the newbie. Yeah, and before we get to Chantilly Bridge, very quickly on your bio, Linda, you mentioned Sidney Lumet as a, a mentor and an inspiration yeah. for you. As far as your skill and speed, what did he tangible things did you learn from him? Because he's one of my favorite filmmakers. Oh, how wonderful! Well, he had great positivity, great energy. I have to work at that, but it was also prepare, prepare, prepare. You know, get your shot lists, get your storyboards, get everything done. Not that you can't switch it, but you have, when, when the going gets, you know, rough, you have one way to go to meet your schedule and to get it done. And, and that's great. And also, um, he actually helped me. When he was editing um, a Vanessa Redgrave movie in the same editing complex when I was editing my very first baby film. Um, and we didn't know how to use the equipment that my feature and it kept breaking and you know sizzling you know when Bill gets caught in something and he'd come in with his great editor Dee Dee Allen and calmly sit down and teach us and from him I learned some tricks about editing and when you're dealing with improv improvised uh, semi-improvised pieces it's magic you know how you can keep refining it to make it look polished and, and as if it was perfectly fine so I owe all that to Sydney. Jill and Pat Patricia, what's it like just working with such a talented ensemble? On top of that, you're working on a project which is, which is a a labor of love and b really comes from the heart and the soul. What is it like that? What is it like to work in such an environment, being experienced veterans? So I would say it's one of the uh, it, definitely in the top five experiences of my whole career, for sure. And um, I think the last time I met like this kind of film with so many good people and a great director and all that was really stole that was a very long time. So, oh, this has been a yeah. long wait. We lost you. Are you there? Oh, I apologize. Can you, you hear me now? Oh, it's okay. We can okay. hear you. Okay. You can, um, it, but okay. This, oh, I'm sure. you're still on. Can, am I still here? You can hear me? Okay. Sorry. Yeah, but, yeah. but this group of actresses, when she called and asked me, I just fell over because I admire every one of them, except for Naji, who we met us new for, for years. I mean, I was in New York for years in the 70s and 80s. And, um, they, everybody was working so much and they were, their work was so, oh God, uh, I, I just feel lucky to get to work with them. And you know, acting is all about just listening and reacting. And when you have brilliant people that are doing amazing work, it's really easy to just listen and react because they're so great. You know, so you're only mm -hmm. as people you work with. That was a great, she was a great addition. She, and I brought her in. You did it was me. She I did. Her. And she was a wonderful. Oh, you did. <laughs> <laughs> but we. Uh, One of my grandchildren. <laughs> and when Linda called about doing this, I felt very excited about uh, having a you know having a chance to get back in that space that we were in for Chantilly, which was really not like anything I'd ever done, and has uh, still a huge lasting impact on me. A lot because you know, we were talking about listening. You know, when you're when when the dialogue is improvised to a great degree, the listening becomes everything, and 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 the response responding. And I feel like I'm a responder as an actor. I really like to, you know, I like to have somebody to respond to. And in, in this situation, you don't have any idea what's going to happen, and it's very exciting because the spontaneous moments that that come up are not like anything else. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's a the bridge in the movie it symbolizes love, 
whether it's here or the next. And for all of you just wondering, with all the projects you've all been involved in, when did you ever come to that place where you realize that love is really a part of that game as far as creating art? And then when love is actually in the equation, does it make the work better? I, I just wonder. So as, a, as an outsider. Love. If you don't have love, then you would leave this business because it is horrible. It can be really rough. It's really <laughs> mean and horrible. So you better love doing it. Yeah, yeah. You know? so I'd say love and passion together, huh. and love for the long term, and passion to get you just over the hump of all the challenges to start. Yeah, yeah. just like marriage. <laughs> <laughs> my final question to all three of you so is: <laughs> uh, My final question to all of you is: Can you name a project, whether it's be a whether it be a film or a TV project, that you would like our listeners or viewers to watch from your body of work, along with Chantilly Lace, eventually, and then Chantilly Bridge? What from your um, body of work you feel is underrated, or you would like our listeners to ca to catch from each of your respective works? Huh. Well, that's interesting. Um, underrated. Yeah. Underrated. Um, I, cause I, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of the, of the series LA Law. I'm really proud of that work. That was, that was a, that was a highlight for me, obviously. Aren't you going back into it again? No, no we, we did a pilot, but it didn't get picked up. Oh, okay. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but, um, in terms of indie films, um, you know, nothing compares to, to these two films that I've, that I've done. So with Linda, so, or with the three, actually, three. um, the, uh, you know, nothing really has holds a candle. So I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Okay. I, I really love working on Yuli Skull. I think I mentioned it before. Um, Victor is the only director I think that's won Sundance twice mm -hmm. and was so kind and listened to everybody and was really collaborative. And, um, and the whole experience was, oh, you know, very low budget movie and, um, and really great. I mean, his, as a director, it was really wonderful. Um, Underrated. I've done a lot of movies that maybe are justifiably underrated. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's the first thing that comes to my mind because it does come on at periodical television. You know, it's around. It, it's, it's, and, and another no, one, one other one I think of is that is uh, if you have a chance to watch Arthur again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That yes. I just did. And my And as I'm leaving, Linda, I'm, so after eventually getting my hands on Chantilly Lace, hopefully that's down the corner, what's the next project after that? After the Chantillys, what's the next thing on your IMDb? Should I, well, I should pick up? We're, of course, working on what our next sequel, and I'm not going to wait 30 years, but I have yeah. coming up um, a book based on a best-selling YA novel one stupid thing about three 16 year olds who do one stupid thing one night and it moves, it threatens to ruin the rest of their lives and which one of us hasn't done at least one stupid thing you yeah. know so that's why I'm very interested and it's the departure obviously from this and fully scripted um, I've done 25 films five of them have been sort of semi-improvised 20 of them have been fully scripted and the funny thing is we did a test at this particular uh, let's say retrospective of my work last week, and people couldn't tell which was fully scripted, which wasn't. That's which amazing. Was That's so cool. I love it. That's very good. Really enjoyed this film. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.